Well, hello. Good morning, Mr. Andrew Chamberlain. How are you? I'm good, Lise. How are you? Good morning. Good I am well. I am well. Welcome to the second episode of uh, Association Transformation 2023. Excited uh, here four. in the new year. Season four. I just want to just... Is like, this season four? Season four we've just started. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Look at us. I know. I just want to just say that because it's like... It's that's that, serious. That's sounds legitimate. Like, sounds like we know a lot of stuff, doesn't it? You know, we just, I mean, we keep we keep showing up, and you know what? Yeah. People keep joining us. We keep winning awards. I mean, this is you know nothing to snub your nose at. Association <laughs> transformation is the place to be, um, and maybe all the more appropriate as we embark on our fourth season to take a look back. Yes, this was today's our opportunity to to look back and and share lessons learned from 2022 mm -hmm. and maybe make a few predictions uh here at the beginning of the year for uh for 2023 so we can hold ourselves accountable next year and see how uh how full of crap we are <laughs> yeah i do have one i do have one prediction that i'm i'm pretty pretty confident in What's and that? that's uh the chicago bears will absolutely not god be in the super bowl anytime uh, soon god god don't even get me started you know when you message me on a Sunday and you say, and you give me, and I have to tell you, don't tell me the score because I'm going to watch it tomorrow morning. Why don't you message me back and tell me not to bother watching it on a Monday? Because you told me not to tell you. It's so depressing. Every game we lose by about four or five points. It's I know. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, you know, okay. So in addition to disappointments of the 2022 NFL season, <sighs> I found a lot of I don't uh, disappointments, surprises, uh, uh, points of optimism in in the association landscape of of twenty twenty two. I thought we could share with each other yeah. some mm -hmm. some uh, aha moments or, or lessons learned from these uh, these last twelve months. Yeah, I think I think you know just generally speaking, I think it's quite. I think it is quite. Is easy the wrong word? Straightforward to really pinpoint some highs in 22 but i also think equally when i reflect on what you know the way the, the the sector the way the industry sort of moved throughout the year i think there's some real for me some worrying lows oh absolutely and that's that's you know great to celebrate the highs let's do that let's talk about the good stuff of course but I am a little bit concerned as we start 2023. I don't quite have the same level of optimism I had in tw at the start of 22. Well, you know, I, well, one of us has to be the optimist. I already claim the pessimist. I'm the glass half empty I know, person. I know, and this is it. So this is me being optimistic. Oh, oh, this is this <laughs> is you being optimistic. Oh dear. Okay. All right. Well, then let's talk about some positives. Mm. Um, I definitely got the sense not only from my own experience, but that of colleagues and, and clients that 2022, we were back to full speed. The year felt like it flew by the, the nature of, of busyness and travel and, and the speed of, of life seemed to be back full yeah. speed ahead. And, uh, and, and as uncertain as things may have been, it was, it was full speed ahead. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I think, those kind of the worries that we experienced in the previous years about, you know, uh, will member will mem will membership survive? Uh, actually, I think those were probably um, dis you know were dispelled because you're right. And I think for me, the kind of the what really epitomised that that energy was the you know when we spoke in August about the ASAE conference in Nashville. You know, you went, it was just pumping it was just absolutely jumping down there wasn't it not just because oh. it was a thrill but it was just people just wanted it needed and the people we spoke oh my gosh the hunger the hunger for in person yeah um I, I from what i understood and, and heard anecdotes of people brought their meetings back in person after two years off two years virtual and there was such a push um you know record numbers and uh, and groups and communities and and uh, societies coming back together in person yeah. and there was yeah. just such a hunger and appetite for human connection which and is getting back together yeah which is fantastic i mean we spoke a couple of weeks ago with larry pasca from the uh, national council of social studies and they were saying you know you know cultivating community is such a you know it's one of the strategic themes 
I would say that's pretty much true of everybody. You know, the cultivate in the community has is as you know. I think the people who were I think communities were nurtured throughout 2020, 2021. In 22, I really saw it, I saw community really come back with a big bang, not just sort of maintaining our numbers, but actually growing our communities was a real, there was a real energy around that. And I love that. And I hope to see that continue. Now, the flip side of that, if we're going to put our, our pessimist hats on, mm-hmm. I was saddened and, and disappointed by some of the disastrous hybrid experiences. <laughs> I know coming out of covid uh, you know, and and having gone virtual and and done you know live feeds and 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 all of it that you can't walk back from that. You can't take that away from your membership per se. But I know so many organizations and clients that really struggled to put on uh, both an in person and then a virtual experience yeah. for for their members, trying to be accessible, trying to extend. Uh, the the exposure of their events and their their programs to to a large audience and offer both both formats. Um, it's expensive. It's hard to do both right. And I just don't think 2022 was it didn't get us to where I thought we would be. Well, I mean, I think we should walk back from it. I think we should oh. walk back from it. I think you say you can't walk back from it, but actually, you know, I remember way back in the day, season season one. Where you were talking, uh, you know, quite rightly about sacrificing those sacred cows, and okay. you know, to me, I'm a little bit concerned that hybrid is a sacred cow, potentially, or could be viewed as a sacred cow, and it's not. It's just an old nag that just needs to. Oh, just stop! Put, You're so put, dramatic. Put sleep, you know, it just needs to be put <laughs> down. Uh, because so you're sending work. hybrid to the glue factory. It doesn't work. Yeah, I am sending hybrid to the glue factory. If this was, I don't know, in the in the UK, we used to have this program called Room 101, where people, you'd have celebrities, and they would, like, talk about the things they would want to put into Room 101, all the stuff they didn't like. And for me, hybrid is one of those things. It doesn't work. Okay. Have, one, okay. have digital. Have digital experiences, definitely. Have in-person experiences, definitely. But the mashup... It's like some awful episode of Glee sometimes when you go into <laughs> some of these um, these hybrid events. You know, it's, 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 a, it's a horrendous mashup that doesn't work. And so do what back from it. Do. If it's not well, I, I think you're right. I mean, there was some nuance in what you said. And, and I agree that you can't walk back from, from virtual as a standalone, as either on demand, you know, a, a virtual... Uh, recording uh, an archive of of live events or virtual specific and and online digital webinars and courses and and things of that to increase accessibility, to increase the the equity of your offerings. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, trying to do them at the same time, um, you know, these live broadcasts of in-person events, we have to stop pretending that we can ever deliver an in-person experience and a virtual experience that are the same. That we, that's I mean, if anything else, 2022 taught us that that's not possible. And I would gladly welcome any listener who's able to prove us wrong. I would gladly welcome and be proved wrong. I would love to see. Uh, I would love someone to come on and say, well, actually, our you know our our events team and our digital team combined, and we did this amazing, you know, amazing. And I mean, it's got to be slick. Yeah. Right? Well, and my first that. question would be, what was your budget? Yeah, well, yeah. Because yes. that, you know, if you don't have the money to to blow this out of the water, then I would say don't don't try. Do do them separately be, as best you can, but uh hybrid is dangerous. Hybrid is a trap and I think it sets a lot of staff up for extreme stress, extreme budget overage and uh and and a lot of member disappointment. But I think the digitization of the industry, I think we saw progress in last year. And I think that's, you know, the, the, the which I think was driven by that need to have virtual experience, you know, on it, yeah. events. But I've seen that in, in 22, I saw a much more sophisticated understanding. I may not yet have seen the realization of people's efforts quite fully yet, but I'm really, you know, when I'm sitting around with board tables, and I'm sure it's the same with you, when you're sitting around with boards of directors or senior management teams, senior leadership teams, there is now a very definite acceptance, understanding, willingness, and desire, 
you know, gone through those stages of, oh, we've got to do it to actually, well, no, this is how, this is the world in which we are now operating. Yeah, yeah. And, and that maybe this is pretty strong. Maybe this is one of the few areas where COVID has, out of necessity, evolved us to a better place. And yep. that's the digitization, the on demand virtual platform and access of, of value and, and, programming and education that that associations and nonprofits are so vital for. Yeah. I, I on the other hand, I've see so so many organizations rolling backwards. Now that you know we're post-COVID, now that things are quote unquote back to normal, they're yeah. they're it, it's like they've forgotten how to be nimble and they've forgotten how to innovate and they've forgotten how to uh push change and they, they almost are just exhaling and they're comfortable going back to the muscle memory and, and what they were before and almost relieved to be there. Well, but that's all. Yeah. And, and I understand why I, not that it's a, not that it's an excuse, but I understand the reason why, because it's comfortable and people are, you know, people are tired. People are, you know, generally, I you know everybody in the industry is is feeling tired. Not just you know, yeah. end of a end of a year, but just generally, I think the end of very of several very difficult years. And so I understand that kind of. Let's go back to our comfort zone because we can almost cruise on autopilot, as it were. Yeah, but I agree with you. I I agree on. I've seen it as well, where that comfort zone is a little bit too comfortable. It's a little bit too familiar, and. We've pushed ourselves, pushed ourselves, pushed ourselves to the point where actually we're tired mentally um, as well as, you know, in terms of resource thin. So let's go back to what we know and what worked well. And and, and that for me is really the, 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 the nub of where I'm feeling particularly worried for 23 is that if I kind of. Well, and this is this is yeah. I mean, maybe you can help me understand this. I. I see the world more aware of and willing to talk about mental health yeah. and balance and, you know, the new, the new realities of work and, and remote yeah. and prioritizing yeah. vacation. And yet at the same time, as much as that's a part of our lexicon more than ever before, I, like you in 2022 saw more burnout yeah. than ever, ever. Because I think not just the lessons of, pandemic are being forgotten i think generally you know if you think about like like i said the stuff that we started talking about three years ago when we started recording this pod we were talking about you know being the need to be nimble the need to be efficient the need to be flexible responsive not reactive the need to be uh, to sacrifice those sacred cows to be focus on the one thing you do amazingly well and yet you know those were lessons that people weren't learning Right. Always. And none all of that is still true. All of that is still true. And I think one of the things I've had a lot with clients recently, and I've had to say to clients, COVID's a convenient smoke screen now. It's done. It's done. I don't you know, it, it happened. Yeah, lots of fallout from it, lots of residual impacts on our businesses. But that's just now that's just business as usual. So let's stop using the pandemic as a smoke screen to to hide uh, or to use it as an excuse for deficiencies in some of our other practices. And well, and certainly not deficiencies that continue. If you're talking about a blip on the screen in 2020 oh, or 2021, it is what definitely it use it as a, an, a context for for a data point. Absolutely. But you, you're right. It can't continue to be a crutch. I think the, the phrase smokescreen is is perfect. It can't continue to be part of your 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 fear or your hesitation or, uh, you know, your your limiting of expectations because of because of covid's impact. You're right that that is over. And, you know, when we talk about 2023 predictions, you know, I don't want to be the sky is falling <laughs> pessimist, but this year. In terms of economics and recession and and all of it, I mean, there could be as much risk, financial risk, in mm. the future in the cards for organizations this year as there was during COVID. More, I think more because I actually think you see more. We are in more uncertain uh, socioeconomic times than we were at least two, you know, two years ago, three years ago. We were all in the same boat and we were all sinking in the same boat, but we were all trying to work it out together. There was on a global scale, there was collaboration. Well, now socioeconomic circumstances are thus, 
and political circumstances are thus that it's an incredibly uncertain uh, uh, period that we're now working in, and it's not COVID related. Oh my God, this is, we're getting really depressed. We should do this as a drinking, we should do this as a drinking episode next time. Yeah, these are the things that I talk about when I'm with boards. You know, these are the large macro scale issues that are impacting our businesses. And actually, Do you come in in like a, a hood and a sickle? Like, do you? <laughs> I Some of them go out in a box, definitely. <laughs> But, you know, I'm looking back, right, as we're talking, I've got up on the screen the list of our very, very first podcast, Leveraging Purposeful Abandonment. Still ve- ne- more necessary than ever. And that is actually our number, if you look at our, our, our uh, pod data, that's still our number one yeah. uh, downloaded uh, download, uh, which is fantastic because it's utterly, utterly relevant. Who is your member of 2030? Still massively important. Engaging the senses and the case for investing in immersive experiences absolutely critical wow we're pretty darn relevant you know fast track fast track in innovation right okay now we called it leveraging covid to fast track innovation but the reality is just leveraging your external circumstances fill in the blank here to yeah. fast track innovation yeah. these are all still highly relevant partnerships leadership governance none of this is none of this that we spoke about was unique to COVID. At the time, we contextualized it because that's what was going on. But the reality is, as we start 2023, all of these are still utterly, utterly relevant. And they're not issues that I'm necessarily seeing always a willingness for people to want to discuss. No, they're not easy. And that's our commitment to our association transformation audience is that we will we will rip the Band-Aid off. We will take on these topics and, and be the ones to start some of these conversations. When I think about where organizations are at the beginning of this new year, I find a lot of my clients and a lot of associations to to need that purposeful and strategic abandonment more than ever before. Because coming through the last three years, they were afraid to say no. They said yes. They added things. They took what they originally had. They added more to it. They added the virtual, the hybrid, the extra this, the extra that to try to make everyone happy during this time of of disruption, during this time where membership was being questioned and and value was being more harshly evaluated. And now organizations have overgrown gardens more so than ever before. They now have these Dupli- these double menus they're 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 competing with their themselves they're doing more they're chasing more they're i i just think an evaluation of what is aligned with your mission where you can be a superstar you know what are those fewer things that you can do best not better best and how can you then sunset the rest so many organizations are going to drown under the weight of their own benefits menu yeah yeah yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I'm sitting thinking, I'm just trying to think of the current, you know, my current sort of um, uh, slate of, of of clients and a couple of them, I'm looking at it thinking, you know, who's buying this stuff? Oh, well, it's, it's unsustainable. It's, and it's, and, you know, and it's always the same. It's like, well, it's this, you know, this 10 or 20 or 30 members and you're like out of how many you know it's micro percentages not even full percentage of members that we respond well that arguably we're reacting to and it's 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 it and and like i say i think the smoke screen now is is being lifted Mm -hmm. and we can't hide from it anymore and i think when i think about 2023 um you know we to say you know it's true we are in the turbulent 20s that's an understatement uh so you know i saw somebody coin that phrase in 2019 you know they say oh is, we, is it going to be the turbulent 20s well it's an understatement um but you know i think you know now we, we can't navigate the turbulence simply by by laying more and more and more you know weighing ourselves down is not right. a way to ensure that we don't topple over it's yeah. So when you think about 2023, what uh, what would your predictions be for for this, you know, the association community and and some of some of your clients? I mean, I, either aspirational or or realistic. What's what's a 2023 prediction that you have? Uh, I think I think, well, I know then that's really interesting. I think if I look at them in sort of themes, uh, if you like, I think people and culture is going to really emerge as a priority for organizing as in, as in, as associations as employers 
Yes. I think because, you know, we, we quite rightly, you know, we spend a lot of time talking about the members, but just as you would expect any business to talk about its cust to focus on its customers, but also to recognize its resources and its assets, i.e. the people who work for that business. I think we really are going to see this come to a head in 2023 where this 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 laying on of more and more expectation responsibility from leadership is going to come into explicit conflict with employee expectation. When we had that pod, we recorded that pod uh, back in uh, I think November, where we spoke about you know the four day week. Um, we spoke to the Royal Society of Biology talking about. They're pretty much going to do it, you know. It's it's you know the four day week is it's real, you know. You mentioned it earlier on, you know, flexible working, remote working, you know these, you know, and actually as we see the big corporates, uh, you know, what did I read yesterday about Twitter and someone else? They're all rolling back. They're yeah. firing and they're forcing and look people what's to come happening back to them. And look what's happening to them. Yeah. Shareholder confidence is shaken. Employees are deciding to walk away. You know, I think people are becoming more uh, as as staff. As staff, we are becoming more aware of the value that we give the the association, and therefore our value within the association is becoming more understood and more clearly pronounced. And as leaders, as boards, we need to recognise that. Um, and I think, I think, if I think back to, oh gosh, um, when did we talk about? I'm trying to think. When did we talk about um, the the Great Resignation? When was that? Because that's our second most listened to podcast. Okay, and it's still so relevant. I mean, now so it's relevant. there's the resignation. There's the silent quitting. That's it. Quiet quitting. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think it all rolls into the new reality of work. That burnout piece. Um, and, and how much we're trying to take on the expectations that we need to manage, not only with our membership, but the focus and prioritization we need to have. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of this, I think, was enabled because of the market, uh, the market spikes during 2020, 2021, you know, after the initial drop, everyone's portfolios went gangbusters mm -hmm. during, uh, you know, during that second half of COVID as things recovered. And then, uh, you know, we started to see the downturn um, in a crazy market year in 2022. And you saw boards start to pull back as those investment accounts and those reserves started to shrink up their stomach for and their willingness to continue investing in innovation and evolving and trying new and pushing forward uh, started to dry up. And my fear is that organizations will lose their courage and lose their their willingness to explore risk or to innovate as the 2023 market, economic markets uh, continue to be so volatile. Yeah. Uh, boards get really tight and really scared when those investment accounts start dropping um, by double di digit percentiles. Yes. Yeah, understandably, they do. So that's that's a fear I have for 2023. Um, you know, I also have a, a maybe bold prediction uh, I, I am predicting that the new Indiana Jones movie that's coming oh. out in this this summer is going to be bad. Um, I don't think that's a bold prediction at all. Is it? I no, don't you don't think? think? A fair prediction. I think that's a fair prediction. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think, yeah. Yeah, I think you've caught me off balance now because I don't know what else is coming. You weren't up. ready for my nerd, my nerd prediction? Oh, you're such a nerd, honestly. I had something really good to say and then you just completely caught me. <laughs> about it honestly anyway yeah do you have a nerd prediction do you have a nerd prediction no because you're the nerd i'm not you good god i just you're right you're the cool kid i am and you're just the yeah you god you're the one who dressed up like a blooming jedi for my star wars thing a couple of years ago you know what may the 5th is a legitimate <laughs> may the, may the holiday 4th. you don't even know when oh. it is may the 4th <laughs> sorry may the 5th is my wedding anniversary sorry <laughs> I mean, May the 4th. All right. So I, maybe I'm a fraudulent nerd. Okay, fine. Fine. But uh, no, 2023 is going to have some exciting things. I think if nothing else, in the sense of, in, in 
in terms of optimism, I believe that because of what we've survived, because of what we've been through, I have more confidence in our ability to make it, in our ability to get through and to continue to deliver relevance to our members, to our audiences. I mean, if, we, if we've made it this far, it means we can. It means that there is a durability and a sincerity to our missions and our visions that push us forward no matter what the circumstances. I, I'm not there yet. I'm not no? there yet. I need to have this conversation this time next year as we're talking about 24 before I am convinced that that's the case. So you're assuming 2024 is like the, it's the horizon. It's the, it's the, you're trying to just get to 2024? No, no. But what I'm saying is you're saying, you know, you're saying that, you know, we've all, we've demonstrated our durability, but I'm not convinced we have. I think we've demonstrated our ability to survive, which is not the same thing at all. Okay. And so I, I I think this year is the year where we, where we see organizations um, demonstrate their durability. And for me, for me, and I really want to focus on our pods this year, for me, that is very much about leadership. I have in the latter in the latter months of 22 I saw some incredibly poor examples or actually some very good examples of poor leadership and you know poor leadership to the to the detriment of you know the 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 membership body's um long term success and so for me I'm not yet convinced um and, and, you know, you'll forgive me for saying the demise after 90 years, the demise of the Institute of Leadership, the Institute of Association Leadership, rather, uh, has left a bitter taste in my mouth at the moment. It's so. a sad, it's a sad symbolic reality. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, and, yeah. yeah. And I think that that is leaving a, a big open question mark for me about the the durability piece so again i want to be i want to be i want someone i want to i want us to have this conversation next year and you tell me well i told you so that's what i want to have well i'm going to tell you that whether i'm right or wrong but regardless anyway but you know (laughs) well then let's commit to each other and let's commit to the association transformation audience uh that we will go out and find the best examples of what's possible what's happened uh, and bring those voices and those leaders and anecdotes and examples to uh, to the microphone this year. Right, let's do it. All right, go get them, Tiger. All right, okay, that's so, okay. So I'm going to do that now. Okay, well, I'm, I'm on my yeah. I'm, I'm that's how I subtly <laughs> task you with all that. But uh, no, thank you so much. Two great podcasts to kick off the year. I'm very excited. Again, Lisa Pratt, Brewer Pratt Solutions here. Your uh, your favorite co-host, the nerd of the house. Uh, and Andrew Chamberlain, uh, elevated. How are you? Are you okay? You're still with me here. I'm trying to thank you. Yeah, I'm listening. I'm listening. You're not even paying attention. I'm. I am. I am. I'm already scouring the interweb for for guests. All right, we're doing our best. We're <laughs> going to do our best for you. Andrew will do even better. He'll work harder. He'll try to I be better. Be fair. I can't do much worse. <laughs> Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us on this episode of Association Transformation. Reach out, let us know any thoughts you have for topics, or if you are one of these inspirational leaders and would love to share your story, please reach out. You can find Association Transformation wherever you get your podcasts. Make us one of your favorites. And until next time, put your members and your mission first. (music) 